Okay, I got my uh, custom shifter built. Next thing I'm going to work on is an auxiliary throttle control. I got right here that I got from JB Custom Fabrications. Uh, it's a nice little setup. It's got a, a fine, fine adjustment. Uh, if you want to back it out little by little, or it's got the push button in the middle and it and it can just slide out as you pull it. I can't really do it with one hand right now, but I'll show it later. Um, it's got a lot of adaptability to however you want to mount it. Um, it came with a hardware kit. Um, it's got what you might need to uh, hook it up to your carburetor or the backside of your uh, accelerator pedal however you decide to do that um, I'm gonna go to directly to the carburetor or on a diesel truck you go straight to the pump uh, whatever um, there's tons of options uh, with something like this um, the reason I like the idea of a uh, of an adjustable throttle control is um, I use my truck more as a utility vehicle hauling stuff um, jumping batteries on other vehicles. I'm going to have an onboard air compressor. I don't have a winch right now, but possibly a, a winch in the future. Um, anything where you might want to bump up the RPMs of your engine to uh, help out your batteries a little bit, get the get the alternator putting out a little more amperage um, compared to what it might be at idle. Um, I know rock crawler guys like to use them. Um, while they're doing their business, I've never done it, and I don't really plan on it. There aren't too many boulders to crawl on in, in uh, central Iowa, but uh, maybe someday I'll get the chance. Um, another another thing, uh, I've, I've put these on dump trucks, used them on dump trucks uh, for obvious reasons for the hydraulics, and uh, also fire trucks. Um, I was a fire truck mechanic at one point in time, and, and they use them for when they're pumping pumping water or foam. So... I've had some experience using different different ones of these, and uh, this is by far the finest adjustment one that I've seen, um, which makes it nice. Uh, we'll go. I'll go through the installation of that, how I'm going to do it, and, and some different options. There's also from JB Custom Fabs a, a shifter mount for that for the uh, throttle control. Um, with my new shifter, uh, this wouldn't work, but I um, I've got it, and I'm going to. Uh, I'll probably still use this. Uh, it'll cut down on my fabrication on, on my end of things here to build a bracket because um, I'm gonna mount this uh, mount the control under the dash on the uh, outside here on the driver's side because uh, for my use I think the best place would be where um, if I'm outside the vehicle uh, open the door and it's right there I don't have to reach across the seat or anything like that but I could see where mounting it on the shifter especially for rock crawler guys uh, would be really handy plus it looks cool um, I decided on this, uh, you know, I could still adapt it to my shifter, but, um, I want to keep that, the shifter kind of standalone and, 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 uh, not really add anything else to it. Um, that build is on the vi video right before this one, if you want to check that out. Uh, but anyway, we're going to install the uh, auxiliary throttle control from JB Custom Fabs. Here's a closer view of the shifter mount for the throttle control. Um, this would be the end. You slide over the shifter and, and a couple set screws there, hold it tight. And this would be the end that you thread, uh, sorry, thread the uh, throttle control through and then tighten everything up against that bushing there. Um, like I said, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to use this even though I'm not putting it on the shifter. It's going underneath my dash. Um, so I'm going to cut off this end and just weld a pretty simple plate uh, with the right angle, with the angle that I want the uh, throttle control to sit at. Just, uh, I'll find a nice piece of stainless floating around here in the shop to uh, weld to that um, in a Make it shaped like a T with probably four uh, screw holes in it to uh, bolt up underneath there.
off. So now we'll get this ready to thread onto our bracket or whatever is going to be uh, holding holding your throttle control, uh, whether it's a uh, your dash itself or um, another bracket or your shifter bracket. Um, you'll undo these. And then I'm going to thread their freshly welded, still warm bracket on there. I left the front nut on there. I'll throw the star washer. The other jam nut. And this ferrule nut. Right. We're going to go ahead and tighten the ferrule nut. and leave these loose. So now I'm gonna thread the small end through the hole in my uh, firewall. Happens to be the same grommet as uh, my speedometer cable. Get that down there and it'll be close to where it'll be mounted here. I'll drill some holes and, and get that mounted. Ah, his ammo's on loose. <laughs> oh, I've never seen a raccoon howl. <laughs> I've never seen a raccoon with, with ice cream on his face either. All right, so we're mounted up here. Um, got a little bit of a gap here because uh, the dash is contoured a little bit and I didn't fit that contour, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it's got nice smooth action. Looks good. Can turn it to lock it, keep it from coming out. So we'll get under the hood and, and hook that up, even though I don't have my engine in, but <laughs> we'll mock something up. Okay, so this is not an actual engine. It is just a mock-up, a... Uh, demonstration purpose only mock-up so don't try this at home i'm a professional and i do my own stunts anyway now that we've got the disclaimer out of the way down here is where my uh cable comes from from the auxiliary throttle control i'm going to uh bring it up and around my uh brake booster and clamp it to the the back of the firewall. Um, you can make some fairly sharp bends with it. Uh, it's in your best interest to keep it as loopy as possible um, just to prevent any kinking and, and keep everything uh, running smooth in there. Also, this thing comes 10 feet long and you can cut it to length. I'm not going to do that because I don't have my engine in place obviously and uh, I'm sure I'm going to be need it a little shorter than what it is. But when you cut it, you got to be careful. Um, obviously, you want this to be this end to be the overall length. Um, I would use a die grinder or something like that to cut it. And obviously, it needs to be longer than the sheathing. Um, and then you'll you'll cut. This is basically all around here are really really stiff wires, and that's the the sheathing that protects it and keeps it operating smoothly so you'll cut that and again i would say a little die grinder or something um, just be very very careful not to get into this part now um, and then the outside is like a hard plastic and uh, some 
wire cutters or something like that would be able to trim around it and get that slit off. Um, anyway, this that's what you want it to look like when you're done uh, cutting it down to size. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now because, like I said, I don't know the exact length that I want it. Anyway, pretending it, this is coming off the, the back side of my firewall somewhat high, kind of close to where the throttle cable is. Um, we're going to run it down here and figure up a way to uh, mount it to the carburetor. And before I get too far here, I wanted to point out that I don't have the e-brake assembly under here. I put uh, disc brakes on the rear end, so I'm going to go with a different e-brake setup probably on the drive shaft. Um, so I don't have the, uh, the T-handle right here or the brake pedal um, hindering the uh, installation of this on the left side over here. So I've got my bracketry done. Um, I had a little help because, and I had forgotten about this, it's been so long. I, uh, I bought this uh, throttle cable, throttle return spring set up. Uh, I can't remember where I got it, but I know you can get them off of eBay. I'm sure that's where I got them, and they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, it's a pretty nice little setup. Um, you got double return spring. A uh, bracket for the return springs fits in the big hole on your on a Holley carburetor, and uh, this is a Holley 750 double pumper. I know they've all got that. Um, I'm not sure about other carburetors. I think they do though. Um, I haven't used very many other ones, but I just got a two and a half inch long stainless uh, Allen head cap head screw, some bushings that I'll be honest with you came from a a uh, wall mount for a TV. Here, I'll show you. Um, right here and right here are all stuff mostly from uh, TV wall mount. The little bag you get with it. I kept all those bushings and they've come in handy. Um, anyway, there's a total of one, two, three bushings on it, and then I put a jam nut in there. This, this piece here is threaded on the throttle return spring kit, quarter 20, and uh, jam nutted it. So these can stay loose and this can stay loose because this on your uh, throttle control, you want, you just, you want it to be able to be free and not get bound up. So then my, my regular uh, throttle cable fits in there, that square hole like on Chevy's and then uh, clips to this part of the, the uh, throttle body. So anyway, um, I made another bracket. This little dude is going to bolt to the top of my throttle return assembly there. And that's what's gonna hold my, um, the cable for my idle control. So there's the new little bracket installed, not tightened up yet. Um, and like I said, the cable will go through the bracket, and then the, uh, the the moving part of the cable will go through this little eye and be tightened down. We'll leave a little bit of slack because uh, you don't ever want it to affect your idle um, RPMs. And with everything, it clears the air cleaner, as you saw in the beginning. Plenty of room. All right, so our engine's back in the truck. Ha ha. Um, we'll see how our brackets work here. 
Again, I'm not cutting this because um, I'm only mocking up the engine right now. You want, you always need that cable to be held good and solid, otherwise it will move. Otherwise, it'll move while when you uh, go to pull on the uh, actuator inside the cab. Um, it also it came with this clamp, which you could use in your bracketry. Mine's not going to need it, but I'll use this up on the firewall where when I clamp the uh, cable up against the firewall to keep things nice and tidy. It's got this dimple in it uh, that'll also keep it from sliding in and out of there. Alright, so slide that on. Now the length of the distance from where you're uh, trimmed back on your insulation and um, stiffener wires in there to where this is um, slid on and tightened and then eventually clipped off is going to depend on how much adjustment you want by it. I'm not going to need a whole lot. I don't think I can't imagine ever using the throttle control for anything over 2,000 RPMs, um, which actually would be handy in breaking in a cam. Um, anyway, so that's going to depend on your preference. Um, right now, we're just guessing because we're mocking up. You want to leave a little bit of slack in this chain um, so you always know your... your uh, Throttle's going back to idle, all the way back to idle against the idle screw and not uh, being held back by this chain. Um, and you always want to make sure nothing is, is going to bind. That's kind of why I slid all of this out. I thought I was going to try and keep it close to the carburetor, but it looked like um, I might run into some binding issues. Um, obviously, this is my way uh, that I'm going to do it. There are several different ways you can build brackets. Um, some will work better than others, and some will look better than others. Um, I'm liking how this is looking so far. Uh, so let me make sure this is tight. And we'll go actuate it a few times in the cab. Okay, I think that's going to work good. There's lots of uh, fine tuning you can do with something like this. Here we can lock it. That can, that'll keep it from doing anything. You can do a quick and fast pull of the throttle or ease it out. Like I said, it's a nice fine adjustment at when you back it out with the threads and you can just punch it back in. Uh, pretty sweet setup. Has a lot of good uses. Uh, really easy installation. Um, use a little creativity in your, your brackets that you, you build or, or your shifter mount. Um, I like it and I'm uh, glad I've got it on there.